rich mixture or lean mixture? That is the question. Well, dear friends of the Jose Manuel H. Garage channel, I'm going to make a video today in which we're going to illustrate a little bit about the difference between a rich mixture, a lean mixture, the advantages and disadvantages in both cases, how to diagnose or detect them and definitely how to properly carburetor the motorcycle. Let's use the example of the carburetors of a Kawasaki. ZZR1100 from 92, Model C and in this case, well, in this case, the mixture can be adjusted using the richness screws or the pilot screws. In this case, they are a little hidden, I've already disassembled them because this motorcycle has cooling in the carburetors, okay? So the carburetor bowl is cooled here and here we had some sleeves that I've released to be able to access, because if not, you see, the pilot screw is just there, okay. Or the richness screw is just below the sleeve and cannot be accessed. In this case, you see, the richness screw or pilot screw is this one here. It is here in this carburetor, it is here, here and here. And we have four. Okay, the first parameter that we have to take into account to make an initial carburation or approximation to the adequate mixture between portions of air, portions of gasoline in the air-gasoline mixture for the combustion of the motorcycle is the indication given in the workshop manual. The workshop manual for the ZZR1100 of the D model, which is from 94 onwards, is the manual that I have. I do not have the one for the C, it indicates that the richness screws have to be turned out two turns. That is to say that to put them two turns out, we have to first tighten them clockwise. Time always tightens, okay? We tighten it until it stops, but without using force. We tighten this screw here, okay? The richness screw. Let's turn it half a turn at a time, counting, okay? and we tighten it until it stops, without applying force, I insist, and then we have to untighten it two turns, half a turn, another half turn and so on until four half turns, which gives us two turns, and so on for all of them. There we would have the first approximation of the proper air fuel regulation according to the workshop manual. I have counted the turns that this carburetor had when disassembling it, assuming that this mixture was made correctly before disassembling it and in all of them, in all four, they were at two and a half turns. For the moment, since they were at two and a half turns and the bike has run well and has passed its mo, I am going to leave it back at two and a half turns, because this is not an exact science, it depends on several factors. Let's wait. One factor that intervenes a lot is the altitude, ah, uh, therefore the barometric pressure in which we find ourselves. I live at an altitude of 10,000 meters in the Sierra de Madrid and, well, the regulation doesn't necessarily have to be the same, but I bought the bike in Mercia and there, when he bought the Mar Menor, the bike was at sea level. So, well, I'll have to approximate it, but, well, this would be the first approximation of the carburation, okay? Knowing how many turns of the richness screw need to be made with respect to the maximum limit and for that we'll use the workshop manual. The next thing we have to keep in mind is that we may need the mixture to be a little lean, which would mean lean having slightly more portions of air than gasoline with respect to the theoretical, which is the schematic. The schematic tells us that there must be 14.7 portions of air for each portion of gasoline. That's the schematic. A lean mixture would be one that has, instead of 14.7, slightly more than 14.7% air compared to one of gasoline. Poor because it is lean in gasoline, okay, poor in fuel. And a rich mixture would mean that we have a little more, sorry, a little less of those 14.7 portions of air. Instead of having 14.7, we would have less than 14.7 portions of air to one portion of gasoline. And that is the lambda factor. A lambda factor greater than 1 would be a mixture. I was saying that a lambda factor less than 1 would be a rich mixture because we have less than 14.7% air to gasoline and a lean mixture would have a lambda factor greater than 1, okay? 
That is, it has with respect to the skeletometric ratio which is 14.7.1, that is, 14.7 portions of air to one of fuel. It would have more than 14.7 portions of air. This would be a lean mixture, lean in gasoline or rich in gasoline, lambda factor. Okay? Once we know exactly what a rich or lean mixture means, how can we identify a rich or lean mixture? We can identify it by the symptoms that the bike is showing us, okay? For example, in a lean mixture, that is, a lambda factor of less than 1.095090. The symptoms that we would get, for example, would be that when we give a blip of the gas, when we give a blip of the gas, it is clear that the engine does not drop in revs well. It does not drop, it does not drop in revs well. It has a hard time dropping in revs. Okay. Another symptom is that the idle speed is unstable or when idling the bike tends to accelerate on its own. That would also be another symptom of a lean mixture. Another way that we have to identify a lean mixture is that the idle adjustment screw, that is, this one, is very sensitive, that is, with very little that we move it, the idle speed either drops quickly or the idle speed increases quickly, okay? It is very sensitive to adjustments, okay? And another symptom that we can use to diagnose that we have a lean mixture is that when removing the spark plug from its housing, it comes out a little white or very light. Okay? All of these would be symptoms of a lean mixture. What consequences does a lean mixture have for the engine? Well, a priori it is bad for the engine, a little bad. We are talking about nuances and subtleties. In other words, for the useful life of the engine it is better to have a mixture that is a little lean than a little lean. Okay, why is it bad for the engine? Well, because it increases the temperature of the engine, okay? With a lean mixture, what we do is make the engine run hotter. What advantage would a lean mixture have on the other hand? It is that less fuel is consumed. That is why now, in order to comply with regulations and such, all motorcycles tend to have a mixture that is a little lean or dry, okay. In other words, a lean mixture is also understood as a dry mixture, a rich mixture is also understood as a thick, thick mixture, okay. The bike is fat, it has a rich mixture. The bike is dry, it has a lean mixture, okay. For example, if we increase the air in the schematic mixture by around 5%, we are achieving the maximum capacity for the lowest possible consumption with that 5%. That would be the limit of the lowest possible consumption of the bike with 5% extra air compared to the 14.7 parts of air compared to the portion of gasoline. Okay, but of course, if this excess is greater than 5%, it harms combustion and can even cause piston detonations, okay? Also, with a lean mixture, we reduce the engine's power a little. Okay? Conclusion, the best part about the dry mixture or the lean mixture is reduced fuel consumption. On the other hand, when faced with a lean mixture, a rich mixture, that is, we insist that the proportion of air to gasoline of the skeletometric ratio of 14.7 air to 1 gasoline, tends to decrease the air, that is, there is more gasoline in that mixture than in the skeletometric ratio. What symptoms can we detect in a motorcycle when it has a rich mixture? Okay, for example, the engine can suddenly stop when decelerating, okay. That is, the revs drop very, very quickly, and the revs drop very quickly, okay. And when faced with a lean mixture, which we had said has a hard time dropping revs, in a rich mixture the revs drop very quickly. The idle speed, the idle speed becomes very sluggish, that is, 
you have to turn it many times in one direction or the other to increase the revolutions per minute at idle speed or to decrease them, you have to turn it many times. Contrary to what we have already said about the lean mixture, which with very few turns that we give it, we would immediately notice either the increase or the decrease in revolutions per minute. Another symptom that we can use to detect that the mixture is rich is that when removing the spark plug, the spark plug comes out with carbon. When there is excess fuel, combustion always tends to have carbon in the combustion, okay. Carbon is produced by excess fuel in the mixture. Another symptom that we can see is that the bike does not pull enough, that it is driving with slow reactions and that it can even emit white smoke through the muffler. Those would be the symptoms, okay? What consequences does a rich mixture have for the engine? Well, the most positive consequence is that a mixture that tends to be a little rich, what it does is extend the useful life of the engine. Why? Because it lowers the temperature of the engine and it cools better. With a little more gasoline compared to the skeletal, the engine reflects. It was better. But on the other hand, this also causes us to have higher fuel consumption, higher pollution from the gases that are released or dumped outside. The power increases a little with all this, okay? A cooler engine, more power, higher consumption and higher emissions. That's why if you don't pass the ITV due to CO, CO2 emissions, etc, etc, what you have to do a priori is lean the mixture. Leaking the mixture directly lowers the emission levels. How could the issue of finding the perfect carburation be made 100% scientific with the turns that have to be made in one direction or the other of the richness screw? Okay, you just have to do it a quarter turn at a time to adjust it. Well, you have to do it with a device called a gas analyzer. That gas analyzer. Normally, the exhaust pipes, I'm checking to see if I can find this exhaust pipe where, not all the exhaust pipes, but the vast majority of the exhaust pipes. Let's see, here on the R6 I think you can see it clearly, sorry, the ZCTR was doing it so I didn't see them, but look, here on the R6 you can see them perfectly. You can see that here on the four manifolds there's a screw, okay? On each of the manifolds, that's where that screw opens and the gas analyzer probe would be inserted through that screw. And analyzing the gases, they're the appropriate values that it has to give us for C, CO2, etc, etc, carbon monoxide and all that stuff. Well with these theoretical values, uh, that the gas analyzer gives us, we could adjust, uh, increase or decrease those, uh, uh, proportions of what the gas analyzer gave us. Well, by turning, tightening the richness screw, or loosening the richness screw, okay. In other words, the most scientific thing to do, and if we want to have the exact data, we would need a gas analyzer. The thing is that the device is expensive and we can't always get hold of a gas analyzer. The vast majority of us don't have this gas analyzer at home, and if we can't rent one, then the best thing we can do is adjust it to the revolutions indicated in the workshop manual and, from there, observe the symptoms that I mentioned. And depending on the symptoms that I've increased, by a quarter turn at a time, you can either enrich or thicken the mixture, okay. And that's how you adjust it in a non-scientific or non-exact way. In the exact way, you need a gas analyzer, okay? Well, and finally, when we press, which is the eternal question, I've seen that everyone always doubts, I'm the first one, always doubts about this issue. Okay, we already know that it is enriched or leaned with the richness screw, turning it in one direction or another. But to enrich it, what do we have to do? Tighten the richness screw or loosen the richness screw. What would be the answer? Okay, well the answer is clear, it depends on the type of carburetor. In this case, there are two types of carburetors. The carburetors that have the richness screw. Do you see? This is the richness screw. I was saying that there are two types of carburetors, okay? The ones that have, look, this would be the position of the carburetor on the bike. Here is the inlet of the mixture here to the intake manifolds and here would be the engine block. 
Okay, here we would have the engine block and here would be our air intake and from there the air petrol mixture is produced and the mixture would come out through here. Okay? Well, look. And here we have the slide valve. Okay, the slide valve. Okay, so what you have to look for is if the richness screw, in this case, the richness screw is, look, it's here. You have to look if the richness screw is closer to the mixture inlet to the engine. That is, is the richness screw closer to the engine block and the engine inlet than the slide valve, okay? That is, if the slide valve comes first, then the richness screw, and then we have the engine block. The richness screw is what regulates whether or not air is allowed in, more or less air in the mixture. Therefore, if I loosen the screw counterclockwise, what I'm doing is letting more air in. So, by loosening it, what I'm doing is leaning out the mixture, and by tightening it, that is, in the clockwise direction, what I'm doing is reducing the airflow. Therefore, if I reduce the airflow, what I'm doing is increasing the proportion of gasoline. That is, when I turn it clockwise, what I'm doing is enriching the mixture, okay. Because when the richness screw is closer to the engine block than the slide valve, what this screw regulates is the airflow. Okay, at idle speed, okay? Or at low speeds, we're always talking about low speeds, okay. Well, there's another type of carburetor that's the opposite. Where this screw is before the slide valve, that is, the richness screw goes, then the slide valve, and then the mixture enters the engine block. In the case that the richness screw is before the slide valve, what the screw regulates is not the airflow. What the screw regulates is the mixture ratio. The mixture ratio, okay? So it's just the opposite. If I open the screw, that is, counterclockwise, if I open the screw counterclockwise, what I'm doing is increasing the mixture. Therefore, when I open it, what I do is enrich the mixture, and if I close the screw, that is, clockwise, I close the screw, what I do is reduce the mixture, therefore, I am impoverishing the mixture. Okay? So, when you read and such, people say, no, no, no. Always to impoverish the mixture, what you have to do is open the screw. Well, no, it depends, it depends on where the screw is, okay. In the models where the screw is here, that statement would be correct and in the models where the screw is here, that statement would be incorrect, okay? Being here, I close the screw, I impoverish the mixture, I open the screw, I enrich the mixture. If the screw is here, if I open the screw, there is more air, therefore, I impoverish the mixture. And if I close the screw, there is less air, therefore, I enrich the mixture. Okay? Well, with that we already have the basic, theoretical options of how to adjust our mixture at low revs, okay. Especially what they look at for the ITV, okay. The part, I insist, the most scientific way to do it would be with a gas analyzer, but that's for those who have won. And if not, I insist, we open the richness screws, the turns indicated in the workshop manual and depending on whether we have more or less atmospheric pressure. If we are at a higher altitude, lower altitude, colder, more humid, etc., etc., we can adjust it a little with the symptoms that I have told you. Okay? Well, there you have it. I hope you have understood and that I have explained it well and that it helps you. Now I am going to continue with the adjustment of the mixture of this carburetor of the ZZR100 to move on to synchronizing the carburetors.